Well, hello once again, Space Engineers. We are here today to talk about something I think is quite, quite exciting. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, really good feedback over on the Discord, and um, you can see a link in the description if you want to join us on the Discord. And just talk to us about different scripts and, and uh, how you like Space Engineers and so on and so forth. But today we're here to talk about supply lines. This is a new script that I've been working on for quite a while. It's an idea that I've had for, gosh, a long time and um, felt like it just is needed in space engineers. And what is it, what is it good and useful for? Well, if, if you've got lots of processing centers that you want to uh, mostly fully automate, um, you want to uh, prevent shuttles from offloading ingots to a factory until the inventory is below such a value so you don't overload your, your uh, containers and everything. Uh, well, my biggest thing was I started off with, I was making an ice miner and my base was always getting full of ice and i just couldn't I, I you know what do you do you got to go run over and turn off the miner for a while and then all of a sudden you don't have any ice and you got to hurry up and turn it back on and, and i found myself running around all the time maintaining my my ships that were supposed to be automated and so the problem was though it was overrunning the base with any particular ore because as you can see this is my test base right here and i've got various miners this is one that I run for ice. Uh, this one runs over there and gets uh, iron. Uh, this one is actually a shuttle that runs back and forth uh, to a little mining station that uh, goes and picks up nickel. And then I've got one over here that I use for various and sundry things that I go and pick up, use it myself, and maybe deliver things and this and that. And some other scripting that I'm working on for supply lines will be in there soon. So you want to watch for that because there's going to be some updates on this. Uh, it's a really exciting script. Uh, another thing you might want to manage inventory at your supply depot or your shipyard, you know, something like that. Uh, right now we're doing ores and ingots, but uh, we will probably be doing components in the very near future. So you might also have uh, even delivery shuttles going around with various items in their holes and that automatically drops stuff off at uh, only what you need so they kind of make the rounds to all your different bases you know like a brazilian restaurant you know where they or brazilian steakhouse where they come around and they bring all this um, this food and then if you want it you just say yeah and you'll take it and they'll cut you off a slice and if not well then they just go on and so that that kind of a system can also work with the supply lines it's really exciting uh, the way it's coming together. So I wanted to show you real quick, I'm not going to go into detail about what I'm doing on my test base, but I wanted to show you how to set up a test base. Um, it's really quite simple. I'm, as you can tell, I'm in, on Earth-like and I'm in the, uh, the scenario that has the Earth station here and I've been doing various and sundry testing, but I just stay right here in this little area and work on different stuff. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to set up another base uh, just real quick. Uh, first thing you typically want to do, and, and I know I'm going to probably talk about this uh, in a basic fashion, so people that are real new will be able to understand this as much as the old timers. And the, the guys that want more advanced stuff, get on my Discord. We'll, I'm happy to talk with you more about uh, more advanced kinds of things and, and this and that. So I just hit the uh, B button to make sure that this was gravity aligned. I'm going to place that there. Now I'm going to put a container on here. Obviously, I have the... Uh, uh, the administrative stuff turned on so I can just copy and paste this stuff. Uh, I'm not worried about uh, cheating at the moment. So now I'm going to go in here and I've got a container sorter and so, um, or conveyor sorter, sorry, and I'm going to point that towards my container. And so I'm going to put that there. Then I'm going to have to fly up here just a little bit, fly up, and I'm going to put number four there. That's a, a connector. And I'm just going to put that connector right on the back side of that uh, of sorter. Then I'm going to come around here and I'm going to put in a, a programming block, which I've got in my number six here. Now for the new guys, you can point at this at the bottom and the, the thing will come around here. And now that's the screen that you can see to do the programming into. And if you put it over here, then it turns that way. So either way in this case is okay. I'm going to go ahead and stick it here. But I'm also then going to turn right around and I'm going to take a wide screen. There we go, a wide LCD panel and put that right over the top of it. Because I really don't need to get into the programming blocks. A lot of times I'll cover over them uh, because the, 
just don't really need to get into them that much. But uh, you can have it uncovered if you like, and they've got some mini ones and so on and so forth. So lots of things you can do. Well, we're setting up a base here for supply lines. And so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to get close enough to this. It turns yellow, and then we're going to hit the K key on the, uh, on the keyboard. And now we can go into the programmable block, and we scroll down here, and after you've subscribed to this on the uh, Steam Workshop, and there'll be a link in the description below on how to do that. But uh, now you can go in here and hit edit. You can do a browse script, or you can even come in here and do a search and find it. It's called Supply Lines, and that's, uh, that's what this one is. So we're going to just click on that, and double click there, and it comes up, and you can see it says Supply Lines. We happen to be running a new version right here, uh, TC102, and um, that's just been released just a few minutes ago uh, as of this recording, but then obviously uh, there's going to be other features and everything as it goes along. So be sure that you've got the latest version by using the browse scripts, and you can do that. And then once in a while you'll want to come back in. Maybe you've read on the Discord there's a new version or something. And all you got to do is go hit browse scripts and then click on it again, and it would update to that latest one off of the web, no matter what that is. Always, 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 when you load a script, you want to make sure that you do this. You want to check the code inside the editor for errors. It, it's possible. It's not very likely, but it's possible that there's been some errors at the transfer, this, that, and something else. So it's always a good idea to do that. And you always like to see it says compilation successful. That means this is going to run just like the developer had said it should. And so, you know, if you find bugs, well, then you find bugs. But right here it says, oh, supply line version is running. Okay, and it's 1.02. And it says there's no SL line LCD found and no direct sorter group found. Well, if you follow the instructions from the web, you'll see that you need to set those up. And that's why we've got a wide panel LCD and we've got a conveyor sorter. Supply lines cannot work without both of them. Um, so you can come in here and set up the wide panel LCD. Now you can do this in so many ways and uh, you can just type in here SL line. That's one way. You can do it what they call a tag and you can have it with the brackets around it. That's okay too. And you can also do the same thing in the custom data so you don't have that taking up your your space in the name so it all depends on how you want to do that i prefer putting it in custom data but you can do it in any of those fashions that you like and you'll come over here back to the the programmable block and a good idea there is to recompile sometimes it finds it sometimes it doesn't working on that probably with a new version by the time you get it we're not going to have a problem with that. But um, anyway, uh, so we've got that coming up. So we've got our wide uh, panel there. We've got a blue background. I'm going to get rid of that blue background. I personally like it to be just solid black. It just seems to look better. And especially once you get a full uh, complement of all these different things that are going on in here, you're going to have different colors. And, um, you know, I just like black. It just seems to fit better. But if you find another color, you're welcome to set them any way you want to. Um, that's not under control of the script. We're not forcing you to have anything. Okay, so now we've got our uh, that set up. Now we need to get our direct sorter group found. Um, so we want to do this. And we want SL direct. Now you're going to put perhaps a lot of different sorters. If you've got one for ice and one for uh, that you're going to have a connector and a, a sorter for iron and then you know all the different mineral the uh, ores and stuff then you want to put those all in the same group and then they'll uh, you know, the sorters are going to turn on and off using the programming uh, of the supply lines so you hit save there now that shows up in here now we go back to the com programmable block and you see it found it there so now we know that we've got the block there's no errors nothing's going on there so we can take a look and see, wow, we've got a screen, tells us what version we're running up here, and we're ready to start seeing some items. Of course, nothing's really programmed and set up to go take a look at, so what we're going to do here is do that. Now, here's how to set up your 
custom data in the programmable block for all of the different ores. And you come into the programmable block, you scroll down here to get to the custom data, you click on that and you'll see already it says supply lines in here, and then each one of the ingots and the ores are already listed for you. And they all have zeros over here. Well, be sure and check the instructions online as to some of the recommended numbers that we have, but I'm just going to place some numbers in here uh, right now so we can kind of get an idea of what might go on. So I'm going to put gold as like a point, uh, point 0.2 up to about a point 0.4. Okay, I'm going to put cobalt as a, a zero up to a point 0.2. Uh, actually, probably a better idea because you use a lot more cobalt than you do gold. So probably in reality, you're going to have this more like this will be the point 0.2. And then the gold we're going to set to zero because if we don't have any gold right now, that's okay. But we don't want more than a 0.04% of our total storage. We don't want that uh, to be more than that. But the zero in front says that you don't require a minimum. So it won't say urgently go get any. It's just going to say, uh, yeah, we're ready to accept gold anytime. Iron, you know, that's going to be typically a lot higher. So we're going to put that from a one to uh, about a nine, I believe, is, is typically where I sit with it. Um, or maybe it's a five. I don't remember now. Four or five. Anyway, again, look in the, uh, in the instructions. I've got some recommended stuff. That's what I'm running on my other test base. And, man, it's just running great. So you go through and you fix all of these. And as you fix them, any of them that are not zero and zero, then they're going to show up on our screen here. So uh, there we go. It takes a second to do that, but there they are. There's cobalt, and it tells us we're looking for a minimum of 2, a maximum of 0.4. Now, and that says it's urgent because we don't have a 0.2 in here. Here's our current, what we've got. And then uh, gold, like I was saying, it was set to 0. So, yeah, if we get some gold, we're happy. If we don't get some gold, we're okay. But, we'll, you know, probably ought to go get some because it's not showing as green. So we, we're really not happy with it. Iron ingot, we need a minimum of 1 percent or one percent of the whole thing and then a four maximum so what we're going to do is just kind of do a little cheat thing here and uh, i'm going to just it's kind of hard to be able to see this and do it but if you do a shift f10 you can put uh, stuff in there so i'm going to put some iron ore and i'm going to put in here about a, a 100 whoops I, i'm not connected there we go well Got to stand up and do that. There we go. That'll work better. Okay, so uh, we're in iron ore and we're going to put a thousand in there. So we'll just say spawn into the targets. Well, we'll see that in a second here we'll have the iron ore get counted and uh, may not be, be enough to to count because it's pretty pretty minor. But yeah, let's try a little more. Let's put another. There we go. That should count. Look at inventory and see what we got here. I got iron in the small container. <coughs> yeah, sorry there. I had, <laughs> had a little sneeze. Um, the yeah, what happened was I put in iron ore instead of iron ingot, and so that's why it's not showing the count. Obviously. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put in just a, uh, oops. let's go in first and just configure it to be iron ingot. We want to put some in there too. So we're going to have, I mean, it's iron ore. Iron ore here, we're going to do a, a 0.2 to, a, let's say, a 0.5. And let's see what that does. Okay, so there it says it's, oh, it's really full because it's got 11.84 in there and we're we wanted a max of 0.5 and a minimum of 0.2 so it's very full but the ingots are not so that means that the refineries need to start refining well as it does this current count would drop down and we're going to still say full on the ore so if you set this up on your existing base that's not a problem it's just going to be as you start using it the current will come down until it gets under the max and then it will show uh, that it's open again. So let's put just a 
little tiny bit of iron ingot in there. And let's see how that works. So iron ingot, we're going to put just a thousand and we'll spawn that in there. And now we'll see that that says it's a 0.82. So it's still not, it's still below our minimum, you see, of one. So we still need to just a little bit more. So that's why it says it's urgent. We need to go out there and do it. So let's put in one more time. And this is still already selected and we just spawn in another thousand. And now, uh, there it goes. It says, oh, now we're 163. So we're between one and four. So therefore it's yellow and it says it's open. And then as we get more and more up there, as you can see, it, this has already turned green. And um, we want to be, uh, it would turn green once we do that. So these are the colors that you're going to see is the red, the yellow, and the green. And uh, that's what they mean in there. Okay, so that's, that's the whole setup uh, of how you do that. You uh, want to have an individual connection for each one of your uh, types ores on your base. So you're going to want to have a sorter and then a connection of some kind. Well, that's why I wanted to show you my base over here of the kinds of connections that you could have uh, that we're currently supporting. And uh, one of them is pipelines, which is a nice mod and it's got a great big long pipeline that goes out to your the little mining community or whatever and then it hauls the stuff back in. And then it comes up here and uh, goes into the base. Now, what we've got, notice there's no sorter here. But the sorter, in this case, is all the way down here. And um, it's on the, well, we were using this miner here and also the uh, sorter to, to take some out. But this is a uh, nanobot, nanobot drill system. And it comes up here, and then uh, I guess the sorter is up in here somewhere. Um, oh, there we go. There's the, the sorter is uh, underneath the medical center. So, uh, so there's going to be in here. There's typically going to be some. Uh, some stuff in the pipeline. Oh, no, I guess it's been all sucked out. So, uh, but anyway, it, it picks up on that drill and then it brings it in and I guess there's no more uh, to be drilled over there. I gotta go find some more in the drilling. Uh, but there's gonna be a sorter here and now this one does the iron and it goes over and there's a big hole over there you can see with iron and then this is a little a small little mining center that I've got and uh, it's got an ore detector on it as well so I can know for sure that there's ore and it's got the uh, nanobot drill on it and then I've also got a script that's actually running on here that makes it do some drilling so that's another script that we'll be talking about be watching the videos and <laughs> watching my discord because uh, I'm doing all kinds of fun little things. And then we've got the stuff going out of here. Now, in this case, because the drill fills up constantly, you want to make sure that that's uh, pushing it out to this connector. And that's where I've got the little uh, shuttle over there that goes around once in a while when we need nickel. And it'll come over here, and this is all set up to drill nickel right now. So uh, there's that. Well. Um, don't want to go into too much detail about how this base works and everything, but I think you get the idea. I uh, do want to try to show you one little thing real quick, uh, if I can. So, let's just go in here. Ice, you can see right now, says 9.64. And what I've got set up is a couple of big hydrogen thrusters. And I just turn those on uh, once in a while. And so that'll blast out the, uh, the uh, hydrogen. And you can see I've got a couple of tanks up there that are currently full with hydrogen. So, and I've got a whole bunch of uh, O2 generators. I got a big line of them there. And I just have a huge amount because I need to fill up my hydrogen tanks 
so I can resupply my big ship that comes in here once in a while and needs hydrogen. So, you know, it's off doing its thing with its automation that's out there. So we'll be able to watch here as the ice starts to go down. It's obviously we're not watching the hydrogen go down, we're watching the ice. So as the hydrogen level goes down, then the O2 generators are going to kick in and start burning up the ice. And this may take a little longer than I'd like to do in the video, but uh, I do, do want you to see that it, how it works, and you'll watch this number right here. The 9.64 will change here in a little bit as the ice starts getting pulled in from those places. And it's stored currently. There's the uh, two little drills here, nanobot drills, that are picking up ice. And I've got this ship that's running PAM, and it goes out and it picks up ice. So let's take a quick look at where that goes and picks it up. You can see that the PAM ship is running in drilling from here, and then the nanobots are, I've got the show area turned on, and they're drilling from this side. So the, the PAM ship's going and making these holes, and then uh, this one's doing that too, because sometimes we really need a lot, a lot of ice at one time. And, but, but I don't need it to constantly run the ice. See, that's one of the things. You can use a small base like this. You could have two or three different uh, tanks. In fact, I think I've got four hydrogen tanks on here now. No, I've got six on here now. Uh, so when, it, when my big ship comes in, it needs four tanks of hydrogen. So I want to make sure that, that there's a space for it. So I've got two here and four here, and they stay pretty full. Except when I'm doing experiments like I'm doing right now. And... Um, that way I've got plenty of hydrogen, but I don't want ice running constantly. And let's take a quick look in here. We'll see we're down at 9.11. We're going to take a real quick look at my inventory here and look for ice. And you'll see that, yes, there's there's quite a bit in here. Uh, this one, oh, container actually is full, but um, I've also got another container. Oh, I'm looking at just ice. If I look at all containers... You can see that I've got several containers that, and spaces that I don't have ice in them. And that's a big thing because you don't want to fill your base with ice or anything else. And that's what Supply Lines is all about. So we've got, you can see where there's a lot of room in here. The This is Dave. That's the one that goes out and gets ice. So it'll take off here in a little bit as soon as we need some more ice. And... Um, Let's just keep scrolling down through here. There's the pipeline cargo. It doesn't have any anything in it, so I probably need to get out there and get that started again in drilling. But it's drilling uh, magnesium, and I've got plenty of ore, as you can see. And up here, I got magnesium powder, and I got plenty of both, so I don't have to worry about that too much. The thing I really wanted to show you was down here in the large containers. Uh, I've got here, this one's almost full, but it's full, uh, it's up in the SAM one. This one's from contain uh, components, and you can see there's no ice in here. There's no ore at all. Now, this is Izzy's inventory manager that's maintaining this stuff, but I'm not filling it up. And if you've ever had the problem of you've got a nice miner running out there and you're not quite using up enough of your ice yet, you're going to see that's a problem. But you see right here, we're... This is where our ice is. And I've probably got too much because I've got ice here and uh, you know my O2 generators are all full. And I think I've got a container or two that's got some ice in it. So I may be having my, yeah, here's some that's got some ice in it. And I've, I've probably got my number on ice just a little bit too high. But that's okay, you can fix that in your system as you learn your um, supply lines with what you're gonna need. Now you can see it's down to 9.11 it's um, still burning it off so it's it filled up all the o2 generators it's bringing that ice in from the different places uh, there's ice you know, it looks like we're we're currently drilling ice here yeah and it's uh it's almost full so it's it's trying to drill back and get some ice uh, this one is yeah same thing it's full 
So these are ready to dump as soon as it's needed. And this, uh, this number goes below nine. So that'll happen in just a second. I'm trying to keep the video on here. Don't want to keep you on very long, but I want you to see this because it's really, it's great when it works. Um, uh, maybe I'll just pause the video for a second and do that. So, okay, so there it went. And you saw it jump from nine to, to seven. It just updated because it, uh, probably what happened was several of two generators needed some ice at once and when they did it dropped down below the nine now also i want you to notice it's coming that back up it's filling from the drills and things and now right there it did it this is one of the things that does commonly happen in supply lines it's because the sorters were open and it just opened that pipe and it dumped because there was a bunch of ice waiting and it wound up before it was shut down it went to 10.32 so that's one of the reasons why you probably want to keep your numbers here just a little bit lower than what you might think you'd like and, and because it constantly does happen here and you'll need to balance these numbers out but i've I got to tell you as soon as you put this in uh, you run, start running supply lines you're going to love it because it just keeps your base clean you can have a small base like this i'm not constantly having to add on more uh, containers just to hold ice and stuff like that now you see my pam ship took off as i said it would take off here and so it's over there now whoops I turn that on there we go it would fly. you can see the pam ship is over there getting oh that's what it is to turn the dampeners off um, but it's over there drilling some ice right now as well as the uh, the drills were yep they're still here but they're going to get full and once they get full they're going to stop and the sorters and all that gets taken care of directly with the supply line script so hopefully you've gotten a real good overview of the supply line script as i said if you have any questions catch me on the discord and um, we're, we're going to start building this it's some pretty interesting stuff I look forward to hearing your comments and ideas about new things that we can put together. And uh, I hope to see you soon on the YouTube and the Discord and everything. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, ring the bell, do all that kind of good stuff. And uh, again, thanks for watching the video. I'm really excited about this script, and I, I'm sure you will be too. Leave the comments below so I can know what, you, what kind of thoughts you have about it. And also catch us on the Discord for new talk about scripts and things like that. Thanks. We'll see you soon. Uh, on this